Come, Nerevar, marvel at my newest creations. Selpies are fascinating aquatic creatures found in most permanent bodies of water on Mars, of which there are not many. They are thus solely restricted to glacial lakes or underground caverns. Selpie is the common name given to most members of the phylum Molizoa, which is likely one of the basal clades in the Martian animal kingdom. In many aspects, they can be regarded as this planet's equivalent of coelenterates, meaning cenodarians and cetinophores. Like them, selpies are radially symmetric, have tentacles, grow out of two germ layers, and lack a central nervous system, as well as an anus. The gut is instead a simple coelenteron, meaning a stomach connected to a single opening that acts as both a mouth and an anus. Disgusting, I know, but that just is how nature is sometimes. It's nothing compared to the existence of Khajiit, if you ask me. Anyway, given how basic this bow plan is, it does not seem surprising to find it again on another planet. The same principles apply to Fractarians, whose earliest members have more than a passing resemblance to the simple life of Earth's Ediacaran, as well as Spongisporians, which broadly resemble Peripherans. However, in all three, evolution has taken divergent paths that make them alien to us. If such differences between Martian and Terran life, despite similar beginnings, are merely due to the differences of the two planets or thanks to some truly Gouldian contingency, is one of the great philosophical debates of our time. It is up to you to decide that for yourself. Thankfully, one of the main differences that sets selfies apart from jellyfish is that they never evolved their characteristic stinging cells. It would have actually been surprising if they did, as those organs are highly derived and their origin remains mysterious. Instead of killing their prey through toxins, selfies can extend their circular maws into a large gape and simply swallow their still-living prey whole, much in the manner of comb jellies. Distinguishing them from comb jellies, which are the largest organisms on Earth that still move with cilia, is their locomotion. Almost all selpies swim through the water using a peculiar form of jet propulsion. The coelenteron is surrounded by multiple tubes running across nearly the whole length of the body. These are muscular and open on both ends. Through wave-like peristaltic pumping, water is ingested at the front and pumped out at the back. Behind the exhausts, the body forms a cone-like tail fluke with concave surfaces. The animals can quickly change directions by bending this fluke and therefore redirecting the jet streams. We may have some clue as to how these structures evolved. Earliest possible fossils of these creatures from Mars' late Neonoachian show a morphology very much like that of actual jellyfish, where instead of jet tubes, the body was propelled by a medusoid bell. Possibly the tubes evolved through the bell attaching itself more firmly to the coelenteron through walls and becoming sectioned that way. The caveat with this speculation is that no such medusoid molozoans survive until today, and it has been argued that these fossils are not actually related to molozoa at all and instead represent a completely extinct phylum. A few distinct body types have evolved among the selpies. Most have a hexaradial or pentaradial symmetry, such as the vurux on the left. Despite having no brain or higher sense organs, it swims through the Antarctic subglacial waters with surprising elegance and coordination. Its tentacles are used both as feelers and to grapple smaller prey. More lethargic relatives of the Vurux live through filter feeding by using many sticky tentacles to sift the water for microorganisms and then lick the catch off the arms. Some living in the deepest lakes and caverns close to geothermal vents subsist almost completely on chemotrophy and have strongly reduced their feeding apparatus and propulsion organs. Some living in luminous subglacial lakes live in endosymbiosis with photosynthetic organisms living in their tissues. More peculiar are quadradial selfies, such as the Tauin at the back. While following the same basic bow plan as its more circular cousins, the tentacles in these creatures are interestingly concentrated on only two sides, making them more biradial. All these forms are exclusively predators, often of smaller selfies. Cave-dwelling forms are known to make almost excessive use of bioluminescence. Most peculiar are forms like the Lamia in the foreground, this creature was originally classified as a brachiostomon due to its worm-like shape, segmentation, and seemingly bilateral symmetry. However, the presence of two jet tubes on the side of the body 
Tentacles surrounding the mouth and the lack of an anus make it far more likely that this organism is allied in some form with the selfies. What exact form this relationship takes remains to be investigated and has some interesting bearing on the evolution of Arizoans. If Lamia turns out to be within Molozoa but also to be part of the bilaterally symmetric Martian animals, then Molozoa is paraphyletic and ancestral to the rest of the Arizoans. This might give some interesting insight on various Laterozoan organs, such as the lungs of Onichognaths, which are theorized to have evolved from jet propulsion organs in aquatic ancestors, as well as the feeding organs of spirifers, antitremitans, and wadgets. But it is also possible that the Lamia is just an oddity, and bilateral symmetry evolved in some selpies independently of Laterozoans, making the more classic hypothesis of the two clades just sharing a common ancestor more viable. A third option proposed by Kratchmer can be safely dismissed. His hypothesis that Arizoa is polyphyletic, with the Molozoa being unrelated to the Laterozoa, and the latter actually evolving out of the Fractarian pseudarticulates, is not viable for obvious reasons. I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the coming ones. Make sure to like and subscribe, visit the project's original website, and maybe also check out my Patreon Yunwa. There you may get to view the next videos early.